Hey guys, Kyle here. Today I'm going to show you a trick I used to significantly boost uh, the render time of this scene here by rendering it out twice with an alpha. Uh, one render was the whole scene minus the clouds, and the other scene was only the clouds with an alpha. Um, I had to do this because I found that when you have a scene that relies heavily on reflectance, and you use pyro clusters, which is what Easy Cloud is made from. The amount of time it takes to render when you combine the two um, was a little bit too slow for my taste. So um, I was able to save massive amounts of time, and I'll show you how I do it. All right, let's go into Cinema 4D here. So um, let's let me show you kind of like the render speed of this, which is decent. All right, and this is without any clouds. So I was able to render this all out without much trouble. It probably took about two minutes per frame at 1600 by 900 resolution. Now, the problem I had, I'll show you real quick, is when I added my clouds to the scene, I had this problem. I mean, it goes, but it's significantly slower. I would say it's about, mm, I don't know, anywhere from five to 10 times slower. I, I'm impatient, I don't wanna deal with that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So um, what I did was, like I said, I rendered out the scene without any of the clouds in there without any of the pyro cluster. And I, I have all those frames, you know, right here. And then um, I did a second render where I converted all my materials to black so that they did not receive any light or shadows, reflections, or anything. And I also um, enabled it to have an object buffer on only the ge geometry in the scene. And this is what I used to alpha between the two renders in After Effects. So, you know, so you get your scene rendered and then you go ahead and add your clouds to the scene. And then you take your same scene you have, you could pro it's probably a good idea to resave it as a new file name because you're going to mess it up pretty big time. And then you take all your materials from your scene like this. Um, and there's several ways to do this. You probably don't even have to do this. Uh, you, could, you could probably use um, material override, but I was having issues with that. So I basically did it this way. So I went through selected all the materials that are in my scene and I unchecked everything that didn't change the shape of it or the transparency of it, which is basically everything but displacement and alpha and maybe transparency, which I wasn't using. So that's fine. You can see all my materials here now are black, pure black. And now when I do a render of the clouds with the sky, it's very, very quick, very quick. So doing it in two different renders is, is extremely fast. Now the downside to this is the um, solar panels did not pick up these clouds, obviously, because they weren't rendered in the same scene. Um, but I did have these other wispy clouds that were part of this um, physical sky object, um, and it was good enough for me. So I just, I think the end result was pretty good. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead also and disable the fog in my physical sky so we don't have that white band here. All right, perfect. Cool. Now, now we need to set up our scene to uh, render out a uh, buffer. So in order to do that, I have my scene organized so that the thinking particles in the sky are, are up here. And everything that's geometry and mesh is right here. So what you do is you, you select all your objects that are geometry and mesh. 
you go ahead and go to Cinema 4D Tags, create a compositing tag, and you go over to, to this tab over here in the attributes, enable uh, an object buffer. In this case, I'm just going to use one. And then you go over here into your render settings, you go ahead and you go to multi-pass, and you click object buffer, and you're going to use the identity one, which you specified here. And if you were to say use two, you would put two here. Um, so you go ahead and check that on. And the next thing you do is you will have to give your multi-pass image a file name, a format. I use JPEG just because it works. It's small. It doesn't take up lots, lots of space. And next, you, you render it out. And you will see um, in your, your secondary pass with just the clouds, it'll be all black with your clouds. And you'll notice that you'll have, if you go over here into the layer tab, you now have two different um, two different images are made with just one render. This is your object buffer, okay? And that image is what we'll use to alpha between the two in After Effects. All right, so let's go into After Effects. So once you have your renders done, you go ahead and import your files. So you import your object buffer, you import your rendered scene without the clouds, and of course your clouds without the mesh right here. All right, and the way you do this is uh, you'll want to put in your cloud scene, and then your object buffer will go above it. And we're going to set this track mat to Luma inverted mat. And then lastly, we're going to place our rendered geometry at the bottom. And voila, you just saved like 10 hours of, of your life. All right, well, I guess that sums it up. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.